Hey. Hey, what's up, what's up? Happy Friday to you, my friends. How are you doing? Are you living la vida loca? Or are you just kind of getting ready for the weekend and praying you can like hide under the duvet because it's fall? Well, I hope that you are in good spirits and feeling fine on this Friday. I have been mm, a little bit busy. <laughs> We've had several exciting things going on this week. Book launches, card launches. Um, I just got back from presenting on Sunday in Monaco. Uh, it was actually this really wonderful event um, called Osez Vous Aimez. Donc, uh, si vous parlez français, c'était uh, une conférence uh, à Stars and Bars qui était organisée par Kate Powers. So I was invited by the lovely Kate Powers, who is the um, co-owner of Stars and Bars in Monaco. Some of my dear friends from the Global Luminary Activation Experience, they got to see um, and experience the, the free hug sign <laughs> um, outside of Stars and Bars. And one of the beautiful things that Kate does, besides um, you know, running this amazing restaurant <clears throat> that used to be known for like, um, you know, American food. So when, when I first moved here, it was a place you could go and have like a good old American burger. But now I'm vegan and so many other people are vegan in, in Monaco and Kate has like transformed into this fusion and vegan and eco hub. I mean, it's amazing. But it was really awesome because one of the things that Kate does is she hosts events that are about caring for the planet, caring for ourselves, caring for our little ones. So from health and wellness days to spiritual talks. And the one that we did uh, on Sunday was Dare to Love Yourself. And it was all in French which was quite fun for me. I gotta say hello to Ninette and Gerd. Hello to all of my peeps in Norway and Denmark and Iceland. You know, I, I have so much more compassion, even though I already have a lot of compassion for my speakers who are speaking in English, sometimes for the first time. We hosted 60 people here um, a couple of weeks ago, and some of them were very nervous. So I know how that feels, because even though I've been living in France for nine years and I'm fluent in French, um, this was me presenting my life's work, um, well, part of my most important work to date, and that is how do we liberate and love our authentic self? So it's a lot of psychology and some spirituality and my personal story. So I got to share it in French and um, it was pretty surreal. Uh, it, was, it was a great challenge and great fun. And it was interesting because uh, I got this return um, from the people, as we say, who were, were deeply touched. So I shared a lot about how our early life experiences, our early childhood experiences, can sometimes cause us to go off track, like we're born in this perfect state, ready to live our dream, live our passion, like, right? But based on the way we grew up, or our parents, or our siblings, or bullies at school, we sometimes don't end up living our authentic self. And one of the questions I posed at this event was, are you prepared to love yourself? And one of the ways that that might show up in the world is, are you willing to live your dream life without guilt? And that's what I got to ask you. Are you willing to step up and claim this life as your own? Are you willing to um, embrace the fact that it is your life? Because one of the things that, that came up was these ideas between guilt and regret. Many people expressed that when they try to do something for themselves, whether that's self-care, like just having a me day or a spa day, or whether it's really setting boundaries with like family members, some people feel guilty. They feel guilty for focusing on their needs. 
And there's a fine line, I'll admit it, there's a fine line between self-love, which can become this narcissistic thing that's I'm going to do everything for me at the expense of others. And then there's true self-love, which is about loving and honoring who you are so that you stay alive, so that you can live your authentic best. And, and so this idea of do we get driven and pushed by guilt, which may force us to stay in very familiar roles, um, not daring to actually live your truth. You know, some people express that, like, wait a minute, if I love myself, if I prioritize my desires, I would feel guilty because of the people I'd be, quote unquote, leaving behind. Is this making sense to anyone out there? You guys have gone silent. Can you hear me? Am I, am I coming through loud and clear? Um, so I just wonder if, if you internally, do you feel like you have a dream? Do you have some sort of passion? Um, maybe it's a wish or a desire to, to set up a company or do something new or just evolve and step into a higher expression of your divi divinity. I wonder if, there, if you notice that familiar pull, that kind of drag, that magnetic force that would lure you back to your comfort zone. Um, I mean, if we really want to break free from ordinary life, but you feel like you've got more fear than faith, or you have more family and friends that make you feel guilty, or they actually would out and out shame you for wanting to do something for yourself. Um, I just wonder if there's anybody out there who's dealing with that. Because one of the things that I shared was, you know, it's, it's very easy for us to fall back into those familial and familiar patterns and become like Cinderella. You know, you just start to feel helpless and hopeless and continue to do what you've always done because you feel like you just can't break free. And so I just wonder, do you feel like it would be selfish for you to want a better life for yourself? And would it be wrong for you to leave the nest, to leave your little home situation, to, to find your own truth, to follow a path that may actually inspire you to finally live in more of your potential. Because as much as it may sound selfish, what some of us are re realizing is that the older you get, the, the more dire the consequences. So yes, I have a birthday. I'm celebrating very soon. <laughs> so this is one of those times of the year where I start to go in and I really think about one, what have I done for the whole year? And two, like, what does my life really mean? Like, am I, am I living with a sense of purpose? Um, do I even matter? And as the people that are around me are getting older, you know, over 40, pushing 50, right? Um, what we're starting to see is there, is there are people around us who are now really experiencing health challenges and some of those health challenges are due to your lifestyle and I'm not talking about the eating fast food and drinking and smoking I'm talking about the way you have styled your life to meet everybody else's needs except your own like we don't usually think of that having a health consequence but depression anxiety all of the autoimmune conditions, like we literally turn down our vitality when we turn down our self-expression and living our truth. And so when, when we start to see that people are literally feeling the health impacts, like they, they're more prone to getting colds, they get sick more often. It's as if your body is revolting and saying, if you're not going to draw a line and, and take care of me. I'm going to make you. I'm going to force you. And so the real question is, if you don't take flight, if you don't explore and express you know, more of your divine essence, if you don't live as your authentic self, could you tolerate that? 
how much longer could you tolerate that? I know that's not a very fun question, but the next question is, if you were to die today, would you be dying with any regrets? You know, this week we published the second edition of my friend Derry Llewellyn Davies, his book, Life's Great Adventure, and he and I teamed up to, um, to co-found a company around helping people design their lives in alignment with their values and their truth. And one of the things that has motivated us both is asking this question on a regular basis. If I were to die today, would I be going out with any regrets? And Derry was influenced by his father. I was influenced by my mother with around this area of regret. And I'll, I'll share that story a little bit later. But the bottom line is when I was in Monaco and there was an individual who was uh, sharing that he experienced like physical symptoms that he knew were tied to him always giving in, always going over to mom's house, always being there for her, and always feeling this sense of guilt anytime he did something for himself. And there comes a moment where you've got to take responsibility for your life and you also have to look at yes we want to be good to our parents absolutely but are we enabling them are we just encouraging them to keep doing what they're doing without really looking at who they're being something for you to ponder something for you to consider not trying to be too heavy on a friday but um it's been heavy on my heart because if you're willing to start looking at these ideas, then it opens you up to, to taking responsibility for your life and your well-being. And ultimately, I hope, allowing you, you to step into compassion. Because that's one of the things that I shared uh, in Monaco. That, and that is, if we're really going to get to a place where we're comfortable being our authentic self. That means we integrate the shadow, we embrace the parts that we've probably tried to hide or maybe disowned. And yes, we acknowledge that some of the stuff we've done we're not proud of, we've messed up. But by being compassionate to yourself, you allow yourself to step into the possibility, at least, of real self-love and through real self-love you can get to true authentic happiness so one of the things that I am doing in honor of my birthday it's to remind you that compassion is available at all times and I've created uh, something called the compassion meditation series where you can listen to a daily meditation, a guided meditation, that will lead you through the compassion meditation, which is often referred to as metta, or the loving kindness meditation. And this is a meditation practice where we first tune into compassion for ourselves, and then we start to extend that compassion to people close to us, people further away from us, and then even the people we don't like so much. And it's incredible because it can impact your health. Um, clinical studies have even shown that by practicing this loving-kindness meditation, it can decrease symptoms of anxiety, irritability, anger. For those of you that have like anger issues, definitely do this 21-day challenge. And it, um, the compassion meditation has also been shown to help out with things like depression and borderline personality disorder, and it's completely free. So every day you get an email that um, includes a, a pretty quote and on a pretty card and an audio. So you can listen to um, my voice, hopefully you like my voice, <laughs> and it will help you really tune into compassion as you step into this space of truly loving and accepting yourself. Um, 
I see that Gerd in Norway says that she's worked with this a lot and realize now that you feel much less guilt than before. Awesome. It is a practice. It's something that we do continually. And the more that you practice compassion, it's like a muscle. It can get stronger. And the beautiful thing is it's not selfish. You don't become um, a pushover. You don't become someone who just um, gives in and says, oh, well, I'm just going to have compassion. You actually become stronger and more resilient. So I don't know, Sarah, could you put, put that on the screen? You can visit attunementmeditation.com forward slash compassion, and that will give you access to my free compassion meditation series. I think I can put it on the screen for you as well. Let me, let me do that for you. I think it's worth it for you. So for those of you who've been here before, do you notice anything different about my world over here? Do you? Do you notice anything new, different, interesting? Hmm? Tell me. I wonder, as I'm typing this in, Anybody going to speak up? Anything you notice different? <laughs> I wonder, does anybody see anything different about me or my life? Um, or maybe my sound? Well, there's some new additions here in our studio. Yes. Yes, one of them is the fact that I have a new microphone. I'm preparing for the relaunch of Liberate Your Authentic Self, the podcast, and new podcasts for innate vitality, real self-love, and make your mark global, conscious entrepreneurship and branding. And yes, Ninette, you got it right, this baby. In honor of my birthday, this just came in the mail today. This is available for pre-order, the paperback, the Kindle, and for the first time ever, a hardcover. And yes, the Real Self Love Handbook. It is my most comprehensive work to date on how to liberate and love your authentic self, how to build resilience and live an epic life. And this book includes the five-step process that I've been using over 15 years in clinical practice. It's what I taught at the University of Monaco in the Applied Positive Psychology course. Um, this five-step process is how I've helped people through trauma, addiction, eating disorders, and just depression. It's how I broke free from depression as well. So some of it I've shared in my TED Talks, but this baby is going on sale now and it will be delivered. You can get it for pre-order now, but it will be delivered for my birthday. My birthday is November 9th. So just wanted to share that this came in the mail today. I'm super excited. Um, and yes, this is a time when I think all of us can get, as we look at fall, you know, autumn is a time of harvest and really looking at all of your gifts and all of your talents. And yes, even the things that might be hidden in the shadow, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Our lovely Jungian psych psychologist who talks a lot about archetypes. It's time for us to tune in. As Ofkia says, we can open up our own treasure box and reconnect with these aspects of ourselves that may have been lost or forgotten. Um, thank you for letting me know about the sound, Ninette. I will address that with my new microphone. Um, so thank you all for tuning in today. Um, Sarah has put in the comments how you can get a hold of Derry's book, Life's Great Adventure which is a phenomenal read. It will really inspire you for those of you that want to know how this guy has climbed the highest peaks on all seven continents, how he has done a, an Ironman, the Marathon de Sable. He's now advising major corporations, running his own companies, and is a fully present father to his three girls and his new baby boy. So Life's Great Adventure is a beautiful read published by us at Make Your Mark Global. I'll be doing a new masterclass with Derry around diamond life design and some interviews, so you'll be hearing about him soon. And if you or anyone you know is needing or struggling with 
implementing compassion, forgiveness, and getting into real self-love, then please check out my book. I'm very, very excited. This is um, basically version 2.0 of my previous book, which was called I Love You, Me. I've expanded it and updated it. There's even more exercises. Um, the whole life writing approach that I teach in workshops has been added. So it really is a comprehensive way for you or as a coach or a therapist or for yourself. You can walk through this process to develop self-love and resilience. So thank you for tuning in today. Thank you for being so supportive of me and our beautiful tribe of people. If you haven't done it already, you can join the Real Self Love community at realself.love. We have a full membership of free meditations and the Real Self Love Manifesto and master classes with myself and several of the Real Self Love leaders. We are leading by example. Most of us didn't grow up with someone showing us what it means to love yourself without being narcissistic. So we're leading by example and showing the world what it really means to liberate and love your authentic self. So thank you so much again for being here. I am grateful for your presence in my life and I wish you a wonderful weekend wherever in the world that you are, all right? So remember, you are a gift to the world. So share your presence with passion. Much love. Bye.